Proud Boys trial, day 57 with a recap of day 56. Roger Parloff is back, live tweeting from the courtroom. And yesterday, a big portion of the testimony was closed. The judge said, we're upset that a portion of a sealed hearing accidentally got leaked out and covered by the media. And so they sealed it and now they reopened it. But Roger is back in session and he is giving us an update about what happened yesterday. And my friends, it is looking like this was a pretty consequential cross-examination. Roger said that yesterday, in an early, seemingly innocuous question, Kinnearson, the government prosecutor, asked Zachary Real, remember he's a Proud Boy defendant who was still on the stand yesterday, whether Real ever ended up near a TV tower. You see, this looks like a TV tower in this image. Now, Roger was saying that to me, Zachary Real sounded wary, responding that he was sort of around there in the area. But then Kinnearson showed him this photo, and he says this is Zachary Real in a camo hat, a neck gaiter, and goggles. Now, this is interesting because remember, a lot of the testimony up until this point in time was that Zachary Real was nonviolent. He had nothing to do with this. He wasn't even involved in anything that even resembled an altercation. And so now we get this new image that pops out and he looks like he's kind of prepped up a little bit, more than maybe they let on. So the trial transcript from yesterday said that we hadn't seen this photo before in trial yet. Yesterday, Kinnearson showed a crowd scene where a person is dressed like Real, is lifting his extended arm in the direction of police officers, all right? So a very similar outfit, extending his arm. The man had something dark in his hand. The implication being that Real was pepper spraying the officers. He's repeatedly claimed he never assaulted anyone. Now, when this photo came out, Real denied the individual was him. He said, it's not me. When asked whether they were wearing a camo hat, he said, I can't confirm that. Roger says he stuck to that. Even after prosecutor pointed out that the man next to him is dressed like Isaiah Giddings and Isaiah Giddings has already taken a plea deal. He says, I don't recall what Giddings wore that day. Now, Rogers is jumping in here. He says, look, if I was a juror and yesterday they had to go into the courtroom. So they were in there and they were seeing it and they couldn't tweet and it was a whole different experience, I'm sure. He says, in truth, if I was a juror, I'm not sure I would have understood that the accusation was that real pepper sprayed an officer by having his arm extended. He says, I would have just concluded that the individual did something though, so that real was lying about not being that person. He says, the reason I'm confident about that is the pepper spray is the accusation from the lawyer's colloquy afterwards. He's, he's hearing them talk about this. He's saying Car Carmen Hernandez formally demanded that the government turn over any materials that they have on this. And so they've been debating about this stuff. So Carmen Hernandez has been saying, wait a minute, pepper spray. You're saying now my client has a pepper spray photo. We've got evidence that he pepper sprayed somebody. We, we, I need that evidence. Give me that evidence. Turn over any materials from this, including from Isaiah Giddings that the government brought up in their testimony and whether Giddings ever said in his interviews whether he saw or observed any pepper spraying, right? Carmen is saying, pepper spray, what? You can't, where, where the hell did this come from? This is like a new accusation almost. At the end of the day last night, after the jury left, Hernandez moved for a mistrial, right? Outraged, but not because of the pepper spray. She moved for a mistrial and she was joined by everybody else, Norm Pattis, Joe Biggs, for, the defense attorney for Joe Biggs, the defendant, Nick Smith and others for showing a video depicting a black Antifa woman with a knife who gets knocked unconscious by a single brutal punch repeatedly. Apparently, Zachary Real posted the video on Parler saying, quote, she got what she deserved. And the government was allowing this in because they said this is what they did for recruitment, right? They're making this conspiracy. They're saying these guys are basically a giant gang and they post these videos to go recruit. And so the judge is saying, well, if you got to prove a conspiracy, you, you might as well let them just show anything. And so they're showing stuff that's not even related. It sounds like to January 6, just for recruitment value. Okay. And we've seen this here in this trial before, and we know that part of this government's strategy, it would be mine, certainly, is to play as much bad video as you can over and over, just on repeat, just loop it. Everybody, right? Whose house? Our house. All the bad thing. Everything that they're saying is insurrectionary. Just put it on repeat. And if you have a black juror on this jury panel, which I'm guessing they do, one thing that might be powerful would be to show a video of the Proud Boys cracking a black, quote, Antifa woman over the head, brutal single punch over and over. You just play it over and over again because of the many showings of a video. Real posted the video. 
He texted it also to his mom saying, enjoy mom. The defense attorneys were upset about this saying, how dare you just keep playing this over and over? It's cumulative. It's way too prejudicial. Judge Kelly denied the motion. He said, you know, the reason I let it play so much is because Zach was evasive in his answers and he kept asking him to click on the link to see which one it was. So that's why I allowed it to play. Just play and play and play. Apparently there's a much worse video out there that was photoshopped, set to music and other things. The lawyers are saying, your honor, this has nothing to do with this. It's racist. It has sexist overtones. It's unduly prejudicial. And it looks like the judge denied all of it. Let it in. You can play that stuff. It's very hurtful to the Proud Boys case, so it's perfect. Let it in. Now, this morning started a little bit late. Judge Kelly's going to rule on a couple other things about some text messages and about other evidence being introduced. Yesterday here, we talked about a motion to strike that was introduced by Carmen Hernandez on behalf of Zachary Real, talking about striking some evidence that was presented showing that the Proud Boys were at these other rallies. There was a rally in 2020 in Kalamazoo where the police said that the Proud Boys were marching peacefully. We covered this yesterday and then they were attacked by the people on the sidewalk. Roger says the judge is probably getting a little bit squeamish. Judge Kelly on the bench. All rise, please be seated. Ah, all right, ladies and gentlemen, mm, it's a beautiful Tuesday, he says. All right, we got a couple uh, preliminary things to deal with some evidentiary issues. He says, with regard to these text messages, I am going to allow the government to get into this. Perfect, of course. He thinks impeachment is appropriate. He thinks the Proud Boys can talk about entrepreneurship. He said that violence was an unintended consequence of their political activity. And he says Hernandez elicited it out of the testimony and so it's all fair game. Perfect, point to the government, what a surprise. Now Judge Kelly is discussing some other issues that he really can't piece together. He's responding to some emails. Sounds like some, some debate over this new evidence that Carmen wants to admit, he can't really hear it, Hernandez is now arguing against allowing the government to introduce certain paragraphs. Hernandez wants to introduce this from the guilty plea. Zachary Real is back on the stand. Government prosecutor Kinnearson is doing cross-examination. He says, all right, Mr. Real, picking up where we left off yesterday. Uh, uh, so I want to go back to August 2020. You went to a rally in Fayette Fayetteville. You went to a rally in North Carolina in August, right? Yeah. And you viewed yourself as ready to use violence at rallies? He said, well, I'm prepared for the worst. I'm prepared for violence, but I did not hope for it. And there was a rumor there when you were going, Zach, that Antifa was going to be there. Yeah. And you were kind of ready to F them out, weren't you? He says, yeah, I was actually. It was a rally for women subject to assault. You were there. You were ready to pe pepper spray people with mace. Zach says, well, if people tried to silence those women, I would have used any kind of mace I had if they were trying to do that. Government says... You know, you see a text message that you had with Aaron Wolkind, puts it up on the screen. Yeah, I see it, but that's missing a lot of context. He says, Wolkind's not there, I am. And this doesn't describe in detail what was going on that day. Hernandez objects, uh, don't admit that, he moves to admit, objection. And apparently the text message says this, the prosecutor reads it. Uh-oh, we've got some vulgarity here. Says, you texted Wolkin, you said the following, uh, two busloads of Antifa coming, question mark? His response was, F them up, question mark? And he says, in your response, Mr. Real, was going to beat them with a 12-inch wiener. And Wolken says, use spray and firearm. Spray them as soon as they come into range. You said, I may <laughs> use two cans. You said, I may use two cans of spray today. And he said, burn their eyes out. And so they're talking about, you know, hot dogs and plastic cylinders, gelatinous, you know, orbs and things flying all over the place and beating Antifa with it, beating them with it, you know? Yes, we're preparing for the worst. We don't seek out the violence. <laughs> Wolkin says, they're all put, they're all, whoa, they're all uh, weenies. We got to get back to, we got to calm down here, getting carried away over here. Real says, that's what he's saying. And so the prosecutor says, all right, Zach, so you respond. Yeah, uh, this, you know, this is going on in trial. And I got, I got to imagine the jurors are having the same experience. <laughs> They're saying, uh, yep, couldn't agree more that you said they need a good whooping. You said that Zach says, yeah, I was talking about the protesters. Okay. Who want to shut down the assault. Prosecutor is now switching to 12, 12, 2020. We're getting closer to one six. He says, Zach, I want to recount the fact that Tario made Bertino the leader of the Ministry of Self-Defense. And Bertino posted something in the chat like death before dishonor and other apocalyptic things. Did you see that? Zach says, yeah, I, I saw it. I didn't agree with that. He said, but you uploaded this, didn't you? 
you posted this on your parlor and then you reparlored it, you retweeted it. He says, yeah, I was just retweeting stuff. I was just helping his algorithmic numbers. What Zachary Real is saying is re reparlors are not endorsements, just like retweets are not endorsements. Prosecutor says, okay, so Enrique Tario, the so-called leader of the Proud Boys, your vice president, a leader in the chat, right? He said, I didn't make that decision, but it was the same Woken who talked about burning down Washington, D.C. Real says, what? Prosecutor says, all right, look, Enrique Tario made Biggs the leader of the chat, right? Yeah. Who wanted to be a Zamboni who, quote, rolls over MFers? Is that what, is that true? Real says, I can't count on his state of mind. And now this is going fast. It's hard to keep up. You can see it's hard to even read it a little bit. But here it says, prosecutor continues. On November 16, 2020, Zach, you uploaded a post about Biggs that he said, war on true Christianity, war on Americanism. Do you remember that? I uploaded a lot of things. On January 1st, you up, you upvoted, I think, probably, or, you know, thumbed up or tweeted or whatever. You uploaded Biggs's post, 2021 is the year we mind F and beat the heck out of Antifa. Remember that? Objection from Hernandez. Sidebar. Prosecutor comes back. Zach, did Enrique Tario make Ethan Nordin the leader of the chat? He's breaking this up now. Yeah. And George Meza was also invited by Tario. Objection beyond the scope. Here's Bar Koziba, who is in the trial. Prosecutor says that Tario invited all of these people into the chat. He then says, okay, Zach, you ch you put in the chat some, some sort of a fundraiser to quote smash commies. Do you remember doing that? He says, yeah, I mean, it wasn't literal. It was a joke. I want to show you these text messages that you sent to your brother. Carmen Hernandez, objection, overruled. You said in this text message to your brothers, quote, imagine making a fundraiser to go smash commies. He says, yeah, it's a joke. That's why it says LOL. You testified that Enrique Tario never called for defunding the police or anything like that. Objection. Real says, well, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that you told Uruguay Tario, I think he means Enrique Tario, never called for defunding the police, right? Real says, I don't even know what you're talking about. Prosecutor asks, Zach, after Enrique Tario was arrested, people attempted to nuke the chats? He says, yeah, some people attempted to, but you're reading them, so they obviously didn't. And a new chat was created after Enrique Tario's arrest? Yeah. And that group photo for the new chat was ACAB, meaning all cops are bat, all cops are bastards. Do you remember that? I don't recall that. Now he says, I want to show you this. Hernandez objection overruled. The judge is allowing this to go. Defense attorney for Enrique Tario asked to go to the phones. Prosecutor comes back. Do you re recognize this photo for this chat? He says, I see a photo. Do you see ACAB in the style of ACDC band? Zach says, it means all cops are bastards. So I don't know. You tell me. Prosecutor is now showing another exhibit. Same thing as before. It says AC slash AB. Underneath it says all cops are bastards. Now, now they're bickering over the details, over these notations, they say. Whether nearly two identical exhibits are different or not, Roger says, I don't even know what they're talking about, and I don't even know what the jurors do either. Judge Kelly asks for a sidebar. They're fighting over this. Prosecutor says, okay, the wording says, all caps are bastard. Starts to the right side of the first A. He says, yes, after you change the first photo. Starts to the right side, it does now and it ends near the first B. Carmen Hernandez is exactly right. Says, your honor, objection, 403, waste of time. What the hell are we doing here? Roger says, I don't even know what we're doing here. I don't understand what the difference is between these nearly two identical exhibits. They're looking at two different exhibits. In the exhibit in front of you, the wording under ACAB ends towards the left side of the B, a little closer to the middle. So they're describing these words. On January 6th, two days after Tario was arrested, prosecutor asks, he says, many people were wearing t-shirts that said Tario did nothing wrong, right? Yeah. Do you know why? Objection sustained. Now I wanna go back to January 5th. Zach, this is a message from yourself from a group of people from Philadelphia. Do you recognize it? He says, well, not all the people in that chat are from Philly, but yeah, they're in the Philly area. What you texted was in this chat, you said this, normies out here fighting cops and burning flags. You remember that? Uh, he's reading it, yeah. And you said that crap would hit the fan on January 6th, didn't you? He says, yeah, that was a prediction. And on January 6th, you, the Proud Boys, you shut down a street from the public. He says, well, police basically gave us an escort. But here at 1153, it looks like you're taking over a street, doesn't it? Zach says, well, when I said we shut down a street, I wasn't talking about this street. So you didn't coordinate the takeover of any st of a street with the police, correct? Zach says it wasn't a takeover of a street. No, there was no coordination involved either. Hernandez says, it's a crosswalk. <laughs>
<laughs> She's shouting it out. It's not a street, it's a crosswalk. And so the judge says, hey, no speaking objections. She says, okay, objection. So this takeover of a street says, you did not coordinate the takeover of this you know, crosswalk street with the police, did you? He says, like I said, Mr. Prosecutor, Enrique coordinated with Shane Lamond. Remember that conversation? I talked to you about that. And the prosecutor is getting him back on track, says, you did not coordinate this takeover of the street with the police, right? No. Thank you, he says. Was that hard? Objection sustained. So this prosecutor is getting agitated too. And this reel is very agitated and Carmen's agitated and I'm agitated. So it's just one of those trials. Here, prosecutor says, now you laughed at the fact that police would be pissed off, didn't you, Zach? He's like, what are you talking about? You took this video on January 6th, right? West Plaza near the scaffolding, yeah. And you still have not found any stages yet? This is not, no, I'm, we're not standing where I thought the stages were. And you decided to film that? And so four minutes after you filmed this, you texted your buddies. You said, quote, everyone decided to raid the Capitol. Did you say that? He says, yeah, sure. Pulls the next text message up. And so you'd figured out that there were no stages by then? because Zach was saying he was there to look for stages. So there were no stages by then, and Zach is non-responsive. You testified last week, Zach, that nothing out of the ordinary happened on January 6th. Real says, well, I, I, I've seen some scuffles. You said you saw nothing out of the ordinary in the protests. Yeah, I've been to a lot of protests. So raiding the seat of a government is nothing out of the ordinary? If Zach you know, was familiar with what's going on in the world right now, he'd say, no, it's not, un it's not out of the ordinary at all. In fact, they're doing it in Tennessee. They're doing it in m many places around the country now. They're doing it for causes that are acceptable to the regime. This is not an acceptable cause, but yeah, they're taking, they're raiding in and taking over stuff all over the place. So it's not even unusual. I think Texas is another place they're doing it. Yeah, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's commonplace now, unless you are a MAGA extremist, according to this psycho administration. So Real says, hey, you're twisting my words and you're taking them out of context. Prosecutor says, yeah, but you said you left Biggs and Nordine. Yeah. And you wanted to meet them up at, with them afterwards. He says, yeah, sure. Why not? You wanted to have celebratory beers is what you said. Zach's like, what? Prosecutor is now drawing attention to a line. He says, you said that, quote, we're at a standstill. Cops are dropping concussion bombs. Real says, yeah, that wasn't accurate. They weren't concussion bombs. They were flashbangs. He said, you wrote that people were pepper spraying cops and fighting cops. He said, nothing out of the ordinary. I said, like I said, I've seen a lot of protests and I've seen some scuffles. Prosecutor wants to go back to testimony about a text from congressmen that congressman had been evacuated. He said, you mentioned that you got a message that you went into the Capitol because you thought that the Congress had been evacuated. You remember that? He says, yeah. Is this the message you mean? Puts it up on the screen. It says Pence has been evacuated. So that means the vote does not go in right now. LOL. He puts it up on the screen. You recognize that? Yeah. So what's your question, prosecutor? He said, that doesn't say anything about Congress people, does it? Zach says, well, if he'd been evacuated, if Pence was out of there, why would the Congress people stay? He's laughing. Why would they stay? Prosecutor puts up another message, says, you also texted that, they, quote, they just broke all the doors and windows open and people are pouring in. You sent that? Yeah. Before you went inside? He says, that message, this comment? Yeah. Your testimony was you didn't realize a window had been broken until you went inside the building. You said that, right? Uh, I don't know that I said exactly that. You said you were proud of what your raid of the Capitol had brought about. You said that, right? I said I was proud of the protest. Here's another message on the screen. Do you see a message to your mother at 9.26 p.m. on January 6th? Yeah, I see it. I'll read it for you. Tell me if I read this right. It says, seems like our raid of the Capitol caused chain of events across the country. I'm so effing proud. Is that right? He says, yeah, you read it right. You're proud? He says, yeah, I was proud of the turnout. It wasn't stopping the certification. Our quote raid is a reference to a large group of people who showed up. He says, oh, is that right? Well, let me show you this other exhibit. Now, this is another video near a TV tower. Carmen Hernandez is objecting. Sidebar, Judge Kelly admits it. So we're back to the original testimony about spraying in the direction of the police officer. Prosecutor comes out and says, okay there, Zach. You've had overnight to think about it. You were spraying in the direction of police officers near that TV tower, weren't you? Objection, objection. They're all screaming their mouths off. May we be heard? Overruled. Are you near those towers? Nope, not that I recall. Then they pull up this photo. They say, now that's you, Mr. Real, isn't it? Right here, probably pointing to this fella right here. This is you, Mr. Real. Is that you right there? He says, 
Uh, well, it's a similar mask to what I was wearing. I mean, there were a lot of masks that day. Now I want to show you a similar photo to another photo that you already admitted that was you yesterday. Do you see these sh chevrons on the mask? He says, yeah, it's similar. This is one thing I noticed, the blue stripe on the jacket I don't see. I'm just throwing that out there, saying that I don't see the similarities. They play a new video. They say, how about this neck gaiter? this thing wearing around his neck. Is that is that a camo hat? He says, I can't tell if it's camo. I mean, I can't really see it from here. Prosecutor says, but this is the same person we've been talking about yesterday with the right arm extended, right? He says, I guess you can say that. And says, there's a man in the middle with the same chevron mask, same black goggles, same coat and other things, right? Prosecutor asks, can we zoom in on his hand, please? They zoom in on his hand. Mr. Real, that's a spray canister in your hand, correct? He says, oh, well I, well, I can't tell what it is. I imagine it's an Osno, which is a small handheld recording device that's just recording video. Prosecutor chirps back at him. Do recording devices have a line of substance coming out of them? Wow, what kind of camera does that? Real says, it's a really grainy video there. He says, we see substance, we see coming out of your hand a substance coming out, right? He says, uh, I see streams coming out all over the screen. Prosecutor says, well, I, Osnos don't have a substance coming out of them. And Real says, well, I don't see a substance coming out anywhere. He says, I see streaks. But that's you again in the circle right there as they fast forward. Quality's bad, judge probably overrules it. Prosecutor says, is that the same person, Zach? He says, I can't say for certain. Two frames later, they just parse it over one step further. Is that the same person? No. This person has something in his hand, right? Uh, with 100% certainty, says Zach. I can't say. And that object has some sort of substance coming out of it, right? No, I don't see a substance. Again, I see streaks all over this entire screen. Prosecutor's getting frustrated. Can we back this up? Can we go frame by frame on this? Now, inside the Capitol here, you're wearing the same goggles, neck gaiter, Black jacket, yes, yes, and yes. And when you were on the West Plaza, you viewed what was going on as initial shots in a civil war, didn't you? He says, no. Eventually, rioters pushed the police back again. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. You were near a line of police though, weren't you? Not when I went to a different area. I never moved to another area unless there were a lot of people in that same direction already. And before you went up the Upper West Terrace, you saw a police line? He says, there was, yeah, a police line there and it gave way and you were able to go up into the Upper West Terrace. Zach says, look, I see what you're trying to do, but I followed a bunch of people up there, okay? I followed a bunch of people, I didn't do it on my own. But you went into the building, right? Yeah. And you had a smoke in an office, didn't you? He says, yes, which I regret, should have done that. You know who else went into the building? Ray Epps, and you know who else was in there? Ray Epps, yeah, and he didn't get charged with any crimes. You post, and he was also on the FBI's most wanted list for violent offenders on the day, yeah. So uh, very similar things. Now, maybe Ray Epps didn't smoke in the building. Maybe that's what did it. So you posted to Parler a photo. You said, this is what patriotism looks like, right? Yeah, we covered this one, he said. And while you were on the way to the upper level, you look back on a similar view to this post. So I don't even know what you're talking about. You took this photo, right? Yeah, I believe so. It, and it shows other rioters as far as the eye can see. And he says, yeah, a lot of people there. Weird, so many people there. It's like, wow, why didn't they have any security? It's almost like maybe they should have followed the recommendations of Stephen Sun or taken the recommendations uh, of Donald Trump's administration to bring out the National Guard. They never did any of that. Weird, I wonder why. So here it says, in about two minutes later after you took that photo, you texted, uh, civil war started. You say that? Yeah. But this is nothing out of the ordinary for a protest, right? He says, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary for a protest. Prosecutor's done. Judge says, oh, holy moly. All right, we're going to break for lunch. And Hernandez says, judge, can we have an extra long lunch? I got to prepare for my redirect. Yeah, I'll give you an extra 15 minutes and we'll be back at 150. Recess. Now, Roger gives us a little bit of a note here says, okay, the jury wasn't told that the video of real or the individual dressed exactly like him aiming something at a camera with streaks seeming to come out of that object was a body camera video. Whatever the object was, it was being aimed straight at a cop, whatever the object was from a police body camera. Now, why weren't they told that? I don't know. Anyways, lunch is over. Judge Kelly's back on the bench. Remember, we're in a situation where we have five co-defendants and 50 plus alleged confidential human sources or government informants. And these five co-defendants are kind of on the same team, but they're also kind of not. They're also kind of adverse to one another in certain scenarios. So the question before us is whether or not any of these other co-defendants are going to want to ask any questions of Zachary Real. Judge asks that after lunch. And they can do a direct examination or cross-examination, I suppose. Judge comes back, hey, anybody else want to ask questions? Pattis says, nope, no questions. 
Jaraguay says, we'll do a short redirect. No questions for Nordine or Pozzola. Now, judge lets Jaraguay go first. Both lawyers agree to that. Metcalf reiterates Dominic Pozzola is also going to be testifying once Real is done. Zachary Real retakes the stand. Defense attorney Jaraguay takes the podium. He's representing Enrique Tario. Jury is called back in. Defense attorney is trying to rehabilitate, so to speak, this story, but only really with the focus on his client, Enrique Tario. Jaraguay says, all right, Zach, uh, the prosecutor asked you about texts with your mom. Did those have anything to do with an understanding to storm the Capitol? Objection, overruled. No, had nothing to do with January 6th at all. And those texts, did they have anything to do with an objective you had to storm the Capitol? No, absolutely not. The messages that you sent to your brother, Zach, do those demonstrate an understanding you had with a gentleman here to storm the Capitol? Objection sustained. I wonder what the objection was. Probably asked and answered maybe or something. Referencing any understanding you had to storm the Capitol, did you ever talk about it at all? No, nothing. Any objective? No. What percentage of questions that you've been asked on cross have anything to do with January 6th? Objection sustained. It says, now I want to show a text message introduced yesterday that contained a date error. Text message says, this is what I'm talking about. Citizens feel outraged, but they're seeing us stand up. He's saying there's all sorts of errors, right? He says, okay, this was an error, right? And that was an error. And that's not true either, right? And that's not true either. And Real is agreeing. He's saying, yes, yes, yes. Those are all problems. Zach, you don't know who did the extractions on these phones, do you? Objection sustained. You were asked to confirm certain messages and you confirm some of these, yeah. And other messages, you can't confirm whether or not they're correct, leading. Do you re remember messages from other people? Yeah. Can you tell the jury whether the messages you sent were accurate? Objection overruled. Sidebar. Now, this is another photograph that's already thrown in evidence showing real in gator goggles and a black jacket. So we see here real gator goggles and a black jacket. Okay, that's in evidence. Now they continue. Jaraguay says, asking you about a video of an African-American woman who'd stolen an American flag. You remember those questions? Yeah. She had a helmet on, right? Yeah. Waving a, waving a knife? Objection leading. Do you remember how she was dressed? Yeah. Helmet, knife, black coat. What was she doing with a knife, swinging it around? Can women be dangerous as a man if they're swinging a knife around? Yeah, Jaraguay asks. Did Enrique Tario invite George Mesa to the chat? Yeah. Did Mesa go inside the Capitol? Objection sustained. Do you remember a testimony of Mesa here? Objection sustained. So no, there wasn't. Did Enrique invite Fernando Alonso to the chat? Says, I don't know. Do you know if Alonso went inside the Capitol? Objection sustained. So he's, he's knowing he's going to get all these objections. He's just trying to show that there's a whole lot more to this story. I think this is intentional, okay? He's basically drawing these, these objections, but he just wants to get these facts out and the jurors to hear them, right? Did Enrique invite Kenny Lizardo, who we do know in this trial has come out as a confidential human source? Yeah. Was he a CHS? Yes. Did he go inside? Objection sustained. Can't talk about that. All of this stuff has been very, very narrowly tailored. Did Mr. Kinnearson ask you if there was an understanding or objective to go into the Capitol? Was there any agreement, Zach, to storm the Capitol? No. Was there any plan to storm the Capitol? No. Did I meet with you 10 or 12 times the way the government met with Bertino? Objection sustained. Did I promise you, did I promise you a sentencing deal? Objection sustained. Did I lie to you to get you to testify? Objection sustained. <laughs> and Jaraguay is done, okay? So he knows what he's doing there and he did it on purpose. And the prosecutor's just springing out of the chair. Yeah. You plan to storm the Capitol? No. Did I meet with you 10 or 12 times to pressure you into doing something? Objection sustained. Did I promise you a sentencing deal so you could just skate out of there if you do exactly what I say and say what I want you to say? Did, did I lie to you to get you to come here today? Prosecutors, objection! Rah! Outraged over there. And he says, I don't have any further questions anyways. I'm done. Goes back. Now, the prosecutor says, Your Honor, may we go to the phones? Because he is pissed, right? He probably wants to admonish and sanction Jaraguay. <laughs> and the judge says, the judge says, not right now. And so now Jaraguay's like, oh, crap. I'm, I know I'm in trouble for that one. Okay, that's, that's some spicy potatoes right there. That's a spicy meatball, my friend. That's some hot sauce on there. And he did it. So shout out to Jaraguay. Sometimes you have to do it because <laughs> how else are the jurors going to know any of the things that happened in reality in this case if you don't tell them because the judge won't let you tell them and the government's not going to tell them. So the defense has to just tell them and the prosecutor is going to throw a hissy fit. Yeah, they're not supposed to tell them the truth about anything and they're going to throw a hissy fit. 
And the judge says, not right now. So Hernandez comes back up. She's going to do a redirect of real and she's going to try to rehabilitate him. So she says, all right, Zach, hey, let me start by asking you about that North Carolina rally. You were in a bunch of chats, you and Wolkind and something. Was Wolkind with you at that time? No. Was there any violence that day? No. He says, no, there was a threat of it. One of the things that happens with activism, you just want to, people want to silence their opponents. <laughs> Tell me about it. That's true. A lot of bluster and trash talk. The goal is to make your opponent feel uncomfortable. We prepared for the worst, but we always hope for the best. And if they had assaulted those women, I could have protected them any way I could. I would have protected those women. Carmen says, is that trash talk called trolling? Objection overruled. Well, I wouldn't call it trolling, but it's political BS, you know, mudslinging, calling each other sides, names, and things like that. And so the rally went forward fine, Zach? Yeah. In fact, the counter protesters actually marched with us. Given it was about assault victims, we shook hands. We went our separate ways. Not a big deal at all. And you were asked about Kenny Lazardo. He says, yeah, now showing a couple docs. You were asked about your intent on January 5th in the chat. Did you meet with Nordine or Biggs when you got there? No, I didn't. I wanted to, but I didn't. We went out, we were hanging out, we were smoking cigarettes. We're hanging out with some other people, Freedom, Brian Helion, Isaiah Giddings. Did you run into somebody called Milkshake, called Dan Lyons? He says, yeah, I did. He was walking around the streets, drunk, making a jerk of himself. My and him crossed paths and I was ticked off. I was mad he was making us look bad. I argued with Donahoe about kicking him out of the group. I believe Tario chimed in with my recommendations of what we should do. This was in the morning hours of January 6th. He says, yeah, trying to kick him out for making us look bad, being stupid. Says he would have made me look bad. You know, showing your A, basically, if you're out there making a fool of yourself, I wouldn't want to associate myself with you. Did this have anything to do with the chat? He says, I don't think he was in the chat. Carmen asks, you testified that you were concerned about protesting the election through legal means, correct? He says, well, I wanted the legal process to play out. Do you recognize this article? It's an American Thinker article dated... 12 26 2020 did you read this about that time 2020 yeah she reads a quote she says the quote is it's for mike pence to judge whether the presidential election was held at all and he's saying was this your understanding he says my understanding at the time and we can't hear it this documentary suggested to you or this document suggested that mike pence had a role to play in the process of the count right yeah that it was a legal process, right? Not an insurrection. Yeah, a legal process. Okay, we talked a lot about that here. We went through all the mechanics of the Constitution. In fact, there's a great report you can read about this on the Congressional Research Service that assembled it. And we, we spent a lot of time on this in the aftermath of the 2020 election here on this channel talking about the mechanics of how it works. And I disagreed with the argument that Mike Pence could make some, you know, a magical decision or whatever it is they were trying to allege at the time. I said, I don't see how that can be done here just according to the mechanics. But I still said it's a valid argument. I think you can still make the argument and there is, there is some room there to drive it through, right? And that's what the law is about, by the way. It's all adversarial. One side makes an argument, the other side makes an argument. Just because one side makes an argument you don't agree with doesn't mean it is an insurrection, okay? And that's what they have turned this into. So Mike Pence, he could have, right? If he would have done something a little bit different that day, the whole course of the country could have changed. And there would have been, at that moment, precedent. Everything is unprecedented until somebody does it. Nobody thought Donald Trump was going to be indicted until he was indicted. Okay. It just happened. So Mike Pence easily could have just said, you know what, this is right. And I, I think there's a problem here and I'm going to exercise this and this is how it works. And the country would have figured it out past then. But believing that does not automatically make you an insurrectionist any more than believing that a defendant has a right to a defense makes you a criminal. Everybody can make their arguments and the process will allow the best ideas to play out and resolve themselves. So here, Carmen is making that same point, says, this article said that Jefferson used this procedure and voted himself to be the president, essentially. Carmen said, you asked about Parlor Post, you were asked about Parlor Post and about traitors, asked about Damon and John and Sonny. Are they members of the Proud Boy? Says, we had a group chat going, two of them, uh, Sonny was, Johnny was a prospect and Damon is not a Proud Boy said we had a group chat going and they're going to talk about some of these messages. Judge says, okay, here's a good time for a break before we get going. Jurors can take an afternoon break. Jurors come back. Hang on a minute. Maybe they're out. Yes. Jurors go for a break. Now we're talking about evidence. Judge says, all right, we're going to go through these text messages one by one. Hernandez 
wants to get some of this stuff introduced, right? We left off here. We had a group chat. I want to introduce these text messages because a big part of the government's case has been to show these guys were conspirators leading an insurrection. And where were they plotting this grand conspiracy? Well, in their text messages, actually in their telegram chats in all of the messages. So we've already seen motions from Carmen Hernandez talking about federal rules of evidence and the rule of completeness and saying, hey, if they're going to show maybe one side of these messages, maybe we can introduce some other messages from other people or other protests or other rallies that weren't the same as this case, because you're trying to show that there's this, there's this, you know, concrete pattern. There's this common scheme, this common plan. We want to introduce other evidence to show that's not true. And if you're going to introduce some messages, we think the rule of complete completeness should allow us to fill in the gaps. So we have a complete picture, not just your self-selected arbitrary government perspective. So Carmen wants to introduce this message, says, I'm going to show some of these additional messages. Government is objecting now. They want to be able to introduce evidence of online videos for social recruitment. Black woman getting her head hit in after she was swinging a knife around. That's relevant. It's not hearsay. There's a, there's an admissible purpose for it, but these may not be. Let's see. Long sidebar. Judge Kelly excuses the jurors, the attorney state. Apparently now we're going through each text message that Carmen wants to use one by one. Are some of these going to come in or not? Judge says, I know how I'm going to rule Carmen and Carmen is shaking her head. The judge says, stop shaking your head, Miss Hernandez. It's disrespectful. I've already ruled. Let's go on to the next one. Hernandez says, your honor, this is the most fundamental six amendment violation I've ever seen. My client has been subjected to harsh cross examination. And now I'm not even allowed to present evidence to combat that and rehabilitate him after the government has been abusing him. The judge says, I'm going to enforce the hearsay rules. Give me the next one. Moves on. The statement that was going to be admitted that Carmen wants in is this statement from Zach. I believe the election will not be overturned. That might show that he's not going to insurrect the country and he's going to accept their result. Carmen wants to get that message in. Judge Kelly says, no, I'm going to enforce the hearsay rules. Sorry. Whatever the government wants to get in gets in. Whatever Carmen wants to get in. Sorry, hearsay rules. Judge is suddenly a stickler for the rules. Carmen is still arguing. And the judge says, Carmen, all right, gosh, Will you please stop talking? Okay, stop it. I understand your argument. I disagree with it. And please give me the next text message that you want to use so I can exclude that one too. Carmen is still arguing about the first one. He said, your honor, he believed he was there to protest, that the legal process was going to play out. The judge says, I don't care. Why don't you give me the other two statements? What's your basis for the other two? Another statement was, hopefully Pence has the balls. The next set of statements was, he's communicating with Damon on the 6th. Judge said, I'm going to look at the statements and we'll come back and make decisions. Judge comes back. All right, I've made my decisions. The exhibit where real says, what's that mean? Can't be hearsay. It's a question. So it's been part of the direct. And so it's relevant. But the other two is the kind of evidence I've admitted at the government's behest. So that one makes it into... And the last one is circumstantial state of mind. And I think that's fair, but I'll allow it. So he rules for Hernandez and all three documents and changes his mind. All three of those documents come in. Wow. It's like a miracle. Here, bringing in the jury now. Carmen Hernandez resumes the direct and says, all right, Zach, now you were asked about Bertino and what happened back in December. In December. Can you explain what you understand to have happened? It says, well, what he told everybody was that somebody came into our group and objected. Can you explain your understanding? Object. Judge Kelly strikes the answer. Carmen comes back. All right, Zach, the government showed you statements on the night of December 12th or the morning of the 13th about Bertino and the stabbing. Remember that? You said something about people were out for blood. Why did you say that? We were deceived into thinking he was a victim. Objection. Judge says, hey, Zach, just tell us what you believed at the time, okay? Not... We, you. He says, well, it was my understanding that he was the victim of a crime. I thought someone snuck into our group and started to fight with him and he offend he defended himself. And I later found out objection sustained on December 12th, Zach, your understanding was some of the things you said was based on your understanding that day. Yeah. And thereafter, what kind of actions did the proud boys take? Tario and some of you, he says, well, we did a number of things. We reached out to law enforcement. Oh, you did. Yeah. To get the police to act. Well, we wanted to see what they'd do. What else did you do? We helped raise some money. We raised tens of thousands of dollars. We brought him into the chat. And the Zoom video, was Bertino in on that? What do you recall happening in that video? He says, well, he told the same story about being the victim. And as a result, the chat itself was set up to ensure safety. 
When you were at these organizers, he said, Zach says, when you're the organizer of an event, the last thing you want to worry about is any of your guys getting hurt or assaulted. Carmen asked, did you or did you now punch anybody or destroy any property? No. The prosecutor introduced a parlor pose, Zach. You talked about a civil war, remember? Yeah. He says, it was a text I sent to the group with Sonny Damon, said a couple were not even Proud Boys. A couple were. So that chat was separate from the Proud Boys chats? He says, yeah, absolutely. The Civil War was totally separate. When, when your Civil War started, what was in your mind? He says, well, when I got up to that second level, the lead up was we'd been mocking news. And then by the time I got up there, I sent a video along with the text. Let me show you a video. Carmen puts it up. It says Civil War has started. You remember that? Is that the video? No, the date's wrong. Is this the video? Yeah. Is that the video you took on January 6th? Yes, I move it into evidence. Prosecutor says... Judge, may I have the court's brief indulgence? Judge is like, ugh, yes. Sidebar. Carmen comes back. You posted this at the same time as the Civil War mentioned, right? Zach says yes. Now they're talking about metadata. In the video or in the in the text, Zach is mocking the media reports. Saying it's just it's peaceful. There's nothing going on. Minutes later, I started finding out about everything. Carmen says, Is that your opinion today that everything was peaceful, Zach? He says, oh, no, 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 no. Terrible day. A lot of bad stuff happened. I don't agree with what happened that day. I want to show you another picture. You posted something that says this is what patriotism looks like when people, when the government fears the people, you have freedom. And when people fear the government, you have tyranny. Do you remember that? He said, yeah, at the time I took this, this is what I thought. The next day it looked bad. So I took it off social media. I didn't want the world to think I supported the disgrace that took place that day. He says, by the way, that's a Jefferson phrase also. Did you discuss your friends about the legal process for J6? Yeah. Showing him another document. The person in the text says, are you going to DC on J6? Real says, I'm going today. No bus. Says, do you think they'll overturn the election? Zach says, no, but it will be fun down there anyway. LOL. Yes. Yes, obviously. Now, Real said today, I thought at 1214, that was the end of the road said, I had no expectation about the election. I just wanted to go and have fun, okay? It was just a protest. Shows him another picture. And that's powerful. That's from a separate message that he's also saying. And they've only really been showing them, you know, the bad messages. But these guys have a whole separate life other than this fictional insurrectionist narrative the government has created. Apparently, they said in a text that hopefully Pence has the balls. All he needs to do is the thing. Today, how do you feel about that? Real says, today... I hope Trump could pull something out of his hat, but I wasn't expecting it. This is consistent with the article in The American Thinker. Another text comes in, 1-6 at 1.18 p.m. Damon sends a message, Arizona just objected. Real says, what's that mean? They have a rep and a senator who object, now in special counsel for two hours. Next, they step down and each step in in alphabetical order, right? They were actually doing the protest. They were actually doing the, the speaking of the votes, of the counting of the votes. Damon was one who told me later that Pence was being evacuated. They're now playing the video inside the Capitol where they are all standing around and smoking. And this looks reasonable to play. So... They're standing around and smoking and they says, that's me and Isaiah. I thought Freedom and Brian might be there, but I don't see them. Was there a name on the door? He says, no, no name on the door. Door was already open. And you lit up a cigarette in there, Zach? Yeah, regrettably, I lit up a cigarette. I'm sorry about that. Personally, I don't smoke. A lot of people in there were smoking cigarettes or weed. So I walked by, looked like a break room. I said, screw it. And I went in. You said your first impression of what happened at a first bike rack breach was just a normal rally. Yeah, people acting rowdy, you know, trying to get on stage before the stage is open. That's what I believed at the time was happening. And the same with the Civil War statement? He says, yeah. But later, Zach, you started deleting social media posts, right? He says, I kept photos. I deleted some public messages because I didn't want the public thinking I approved of those acts. And what's your judgment today about January 6th in total? Zach says it was terrible. Lots of cops were assaulted. Parts of the building were destroyed. You could say it divided our country. I don't approve of it. At time, I didn't think I did anything wrong. I still think that, but I shouldn't have gone in the building and shouldn't have smoked a cigarette. I didn't think I'd be charged with nine felonies for it. Well, unfortunately, you weren't a fed. Yeah, if you would have been somebody like maybe Ray Epps or somebody who was also wanted by the FBI, also at the initial breach, also inside the building, also interviewed by the J6 committee, but somehow escaped liability. 
I don't know how he did it. Might want to think about that. You know, I'm curious as to how we have such major double standards in our justice system. But yeah, I didn't think you'd be charged with nine felonies for it either. In fact, you could ask yourself why a bunch of other people are not charged with nine felonies for the times that they have breached or made threats in other uh, governmental buildings around this country, which is happening very regularly now. Insurrections all over the place. Anything you want to say about your conduct that day or about your co-defendants? Objections from the defense. Pattis says, I don't want him to start speaking at all. Overruled says, if I did anything wrong, I apologize. I went there to protest. That's all. Says, I thought it was just going to be another protest. And when I left, that's what I thought it was. Carmen asks, were you ashamed? Zach says, wish I'd never gone in the first place. How much I can change now? If I could, I would. Hernandez is now done. No further questions, your honor. And the jury is excused for a break. Now we're getting near the end of the day. The judge is now instructing Pozzola about his right to remain silent. Says, you know, nobody can force you or compel you to testify. And if you want to exercise your right to remain silent, you are afforded that right under the U.S. Constitution. We cannot comment about that and so on and so forth. Yes, your honor, I understand that. I intend to waive my right to remain silent and I intend to testify. They're arguing about some of the motions. Norm Pattis is talking to the judge about some limiting instructions that he wants to read to the jury. And now Dominic Pozzola takes the stand. The jury is being brought back in and Dominic Pozzola is another proud boy defendant. Salt and pepper beard, much better groomed today, hair much shorter today, wearing a dark suit, plaid tie, blue and gray accent. The judge reads a limiting instruction to the jury says, all right, ladies and gentlemen, anything about Zachary real can only be used to judge real state of mind. The jury says, okay, yeah, we understand. They have no idea what he's talking about. Defense attorney starts. <clears throat> How you feeling there, Dom? I feel good, Steve. Ready to do this. I'm taking the stand today to take responsibility for my actions on January 6th and to explain how these men over here should not be held responsible for my actions. I never even knew these gentlemen till January 6th. Dominic Pozzola is taking the heat for the entire group. These men over here should not be held responsible for what I did. What did you do, Dom? I got caught up in all the craziness. I trespassed at the first breach, at the second breach, maybe the third, basically all of them, all the breaches. I did grab a riot shield. I feared for my life. I grabbed onto it. I pulled onto it. Everything happened in a split second. I saw blood on the ground. I tried to explain to cops. It's not legal to shoot people in the face, but bullets starting coming down. I fell down. Someone grabbed the shield from the police officer. I grabbed it from them. I was angry. I was upset. I'd seen mothers grabbing their children to get them out of the way. I'd seen elderly with heads split open. I was angry. I was upset. And so I made my way up into the Upper West Terrace. Says, yeah, I broke one pane. Just one pane. I did break it. The other pane had a two by four thrown through it already. I broke that one out and then I entered the building. I followed the crowd. I made a video. I stayed in the building for 23 minutes. I gave the shield back to the police and I had no intent to permanently deprive the government. Prosecutors objection calls for a legal conclusion. Sounds like he's reciting the law. I had no intent to permanently deprive the government of their property, right? Defense attorney says, I want to ask you about this time period between December 11th and the 20th. There was an event. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, uh, Rail was there, Biggs there, Nordine was there. I never had met any of those guys. Tario, I knew who he was. I had just joined the club, the Proud Boys, I think about seven days at that point. My really first rally. I was pretty excited about it. I wanted to hear the speech. And Dom, someone has a picture of you and Enrique standing together. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know him. I had never communicated with him at that time. But you had a picture taken in the Washington Post. He says, yeah, yeah, we did. But I didn't know him. Reporters were taking pictures of other people. They were, but a bunch of them came over to me for some reason. I don't know why. Because he looks mean and scary. That's exactly why. I know. Any plan with regard to January 6th? Dominic Pozzola says, no, I never knew of any plan. I never knew anything. Only with the organization for about a month. Most of the chats I was in were in the NYS chapters and a Proud Boy main chapter. Even Bertino, I didn't know who that was. You never talked about any plans? Yeah, no plans. 
What chapter were you involved in, Dom? I was supposed to be with the Rochester chapter, but I heard they stopped vetting, so I hooked up with the Central New York guys. I like them guys. I hung out with them. I met Matthew Green there. Are you in any national or leadership chapters? No. He says, from my understanding, every chapter is autonomous. Degrees are like, you know, a status thing. What did you believe the purpose of the Proud Boys was? He says, I believe the purpose, you know, every time we came to D.C., the purpose was protection of basically Trump supporters. I'd seen on the internet the summer of 2020, a lot of people being brutalized. I was in the military. I was a boxer, pretty good boxer, standing up for people who couldn't stand up for themselves. I seen a lot of families and elderly people being attacked. And how would you protect them? When I saw Proud Boys being out there and being rowdy, we were taking the heat off them. Like in the military? Yeah, I was infantry. Join 97, 98, basic infantrymen, riflemen. We confront the enemy on the ground. Anti-personnel obstacle, breaching systems, clear landmines. Trained to go to the desert in California. We did protests and embassies, non-lethal tactics, crowd control measures, those types of things. And you found yourself suddenly at one of Enrique Tarrio's speeches. Yeah? Yeah, just by chance. You were in the front line on the West Terrace. Yeah, there was. I was uh, looking for people. Did you see any of the Proud Boys having a culture of violence? Did you see that, Dom? No, no, no. It was a culture of toughness, strength of men, brotherhood. I played a lot of sports, hockey, boxing, you know, camaraderie. It's the closest thing I can get outside the military. I turned 21 in boot camp, was in the military for six years. I left when I was 27. I was 43 when I applied for the Proud Boys. I was too old to be a boy. Worked, started a business, raised a family, kept myself with my business, ate, drank my work, worked day and night. Wife wanted to stay home, raise the kids. I supported her decision. And it wasn't until COVID hit that business started slowing down, that jobs would be getting canceled. And then I had to start letting people go and start obsessing. So my wife told me to find a hobby. I had 10 employees before COVID. I had to get rid of everybody except one guy. We were miserable. We were in the flooring business for buildings, hospitals, and schools, fast paced. For us to just be sitting, trying to find work, it was stressful. It took a toll. Yeah, and many of these consequences were a direct result of our government, lest we forget. Defense says, yeah, Lisa, your wife, testified about an event at Rochester. I remember her calling me and telling me she'd come home early because there were riots downtown. Turned on the TV, there was a live TV, was a job trailer for a job I was supposed to be on. Dominic says, so now I'm watching the job trailer burn down to the ground. My job was canceled. I'm like, I'm looking for work. I'm dying for work. His job gets canceled. Now, of course, right in the middle of this powerful testimony about this man losing everything, Judge Kelly says, up, up, up. now's a good time for a break for the evening. And so we're going to excuse the jurors and uh, we're going to uh, release uh, them for the night and we'll get to the attorneys. You guys stick around. Judge says, okay, well, before we close up shop for the day, says we have to talk about him being incarcerated. Anything else you want to bring up? Defense says, I just want to consider the circumstances Pozzola was going through. Hard to say I sat down to FBI on two occasions and lied to them to be a fake story. And fast forward, I'm sitting next to that individual. Prosecutor wants to know. Lawyers tomorrow at 9 a.m. says, no, we're going to have a late start. We're going to begin with the jury at 10 a.m. Let's compromise. Attorneys, be here at 9.15, breaking for the day. All right, so we'll have some more preliminary stuff to attend to in the morning. But that, my friends, is day 56 and day 57 of the Proud Boys trial. And man, we had some juicy testimony there. So we've got some new evidence, some new inquiry about this man in the mask. We don't know how well that's settled with the jury. We know Carmen Hernandez is constantly fighting with the judge to try to get evidence in. We had Dominic Pozzola take the stand after Zachary Real was cross-examined. And so we'll have a full maybe day plus of testimony from Pozzola. Maybe we'll finish that up tomorrow. But that is day 56. And of course, we'll continue to cover it. Mm -hmm.